is all I need. His love has saved me. Good day. Thanks to God. Pastor Stephen Lyons here. I want to welcome you to another Wednesday word. And I want to start off by sharing some information with you about the ministry, how you can connect with us. Visit our website, elchristianchurch.com. There you'll find at the top right corner there how you can connect with us on the various social media platforms. And uh, also, we want to let you know you can use that contact form to reach out to us, um, especially if there's a Sunday you'd like to join us in uh, in-person worship. You can uh, use that contact form. Let us know what Sunday you like to attend. Uh, we want to be sure we reserve your seat in the place as uh, we're currently meeting at. Seating is limited. So if you like to attend, let us know what Sunday and the number of individuals who will be in your party so we can reserve you a seat in the house. Uh, if you are unable to join us for whatever reason in person, you can also catch us virtually or on YouTube. Uh, Facebook, and we live stream on Instagram on Sundays. So please be sure to check uh, those platforms out as well. And of course, our calendar is available and uh, you'll find a link to that at the top of our homepage. And uh, there on our website, you'll find our upcoming events for 2024. Uh, check those out. We would love to meet you and See you at uh, one of our upcoming events. Uh, we are also going to be distributing some uh, uh, meals here in the next week, a little over a week here ahead of our Resurrection Sunday. And if you'd like to donate to contribute towards that, uh, please use the donate link on our website. And there's various ways there how you can donate towards our feeding program, which is around this year and towards the end of the year where uh, we feed those in our community. And uh, we're believing God that we will feed at least 18 families this season. So we hope that um, you will help us accomplish that goal. And uh, we also want to... I encourage you even above and beyond that as we continue to uh, perform and to do the work of uh, the ministry and what God has given his children and the saints of God. Uh, if you like to give towards that vision, uh, you can do that as well using these different methods of giving. <clears throat> so today I do want to take some time to wrap up our first quarter newsletter. And before I get into our newsletter, I want to just pray. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for this time that we have together. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your son. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and that you have planned and in store for your people. I pray right now that you will minister to our hearts. I pray, Lord, that you would allow the message today to be communicated with clarity, God, with authority. And we thank you, Lord, for the hope that we find in Jesus Christ and through your word. And we thank you for all that you're doing in the body and for the plans that you have for your people. Now, God, let your will be done. We give you honor and I give you praise. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right, so the newsletter on our home page of our website, you will find the current newsletter, first quarter 2024, started going through this last week, going to wrap it up today. And when you click on it, it will open up looking a little something like this. And I went through much of this last week. If you haven't had a chance to listen to last Wednesday's word, please check that out. Um, or you can also just download, download the newsletter. You can go through it uh, yourself in your own time. But where um, we made it to and where, what I'm going to wrap up today is the uh, state of the ministry, the state of the ministry. And I want to fill you in on where we are in the build process, what we have accomplished and what we have coming up. And 
you know, this newsletter to give you a little background is released at the beginning, usually the first month of every quarter. And let me just say where God has us right now in the vision that he's given our body specifically, things are moving very quickly, very fast, and they're changing uh, just about weekly at this point. So um, it's getting to a place where even our content, as far as my updates in the newsletter, uh, can be outdated when I do get to it and I'm able to share the newsletter. Uh, but nevertheless, I will continue to do my best to fill you in on all that God is doing and to keep you current on the accomplishments in our work and the goal that uh, we have to build a place of worship. Um praying this year, if not this year, early next year. So, you know, for 2023, I could truly say that God has brought us through a lot in 2023. And he's moved. He's opened up doors for us. Um, been some doors that have been closed. And we've just seen God even perform miracles in and through our ministry and our body. And we're grateful. I'm grateful to God that he has carried us into this year with great expectation. Seeing and witnessing and being a part of what he did in 2023, I'm super excited about what he has in store for, for Everlasting Life Christian Church and his body in 2024. Uh, what does God have in store for us? You know, I don't know exactly down to the nitty gritty what that is, but of course, we know that God knows because he is omniscient, which means he knows everything. And it what our part in all of this is to remain faithful and focused. In 2024, I encourage you, want to encourage your hearts to remain faithful and to remain focused so that you can hear clearly what God is speaking to the body, to his body. And you can carry out those instructions to a T. What I do know is that God's plan, it is perfect. And that what he has in store for us this year, it is good. And I believe that it is even better. It is better than what we experienced in our past. I started this year with the message, the New Year's Eve service, this message, maintaining the right perspective, going through hard times with him. Who is him? Jesus Christ. James wrote in James chapter one, verses three and four, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. And that reminds me of something I shared on Sunday. It, it, there's an Old Testament passage of Scripture, New Testament to passage of Scripture, where we get, you know, we kind of merge these passages together. Um, and we quote that the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but to the one who endures to the end. And this you know, James make that very clear and plainly. One of the things that I was sharing on Sunday is that you don't have to be the quickest, the fastest individual. You don't have to be the strongest. But what we must develop as believers, as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we have to develop an endurance. We have to build up our endurance so that when the test and trials come and when this race seems like it's going to never end, we will not stop. We don't stop. We don't sit down, but we keep going. We might slow down. We might get exhausted and feel tired. And we may rest at times, but we cannot stop moving forward. We cannot stop progressing. Endurance is key to any racer's uh, chance of being able to complete the race and to complete it at the top to come to finish the race and you know that's another thing too is that sometimes when we talk about races especially in the natural we 
talk about the race from the perspective of wanting to finish in the top three, right? First, second, or third, because they're, that podium usually only had three spots, first, second, or third, gold, silver, bronze. But, you know, God reminded me that in the body of Christ, it's not about who makes it in first. It's not about who makes it in second. It's not about who makes it in third. What it is about is that we finish this course, that we cross the finish line. Because we're all will get the opportunity to feast, to enjoy, to sing praises, to worship our God, and to experience the new Jerusalem, that city that has been prepared and is waiting just for you and I. Our faith will be tested this year. I know my faith, the faith of the saints of Everlasting Life Christian Church, we were tested last year. And the test and the trials will continue to come, both corporately and individually. But James reminds us, he reminds us that when our faith is tested, it's given the opportunity to grow. We'll never go through trials in life without also gaining access to opportunities. Anytime you go through, tell yourself there must also be an opportunity in this. And, and, and let me say it like this. Tell yourself there must be a God opportunity in this because every opportunity that comes our way in the natural is not an, a God opportunity. It's not an opportunity that God may want us to have to take advantage of at that point in time and in that season. Anytime you go through, tell yourself there must also be a God opportunity in this. Ask God to open your eyes to see the opportunity in the midst of what you're going through. Tests and trials in our lives help mature us and develop us into the masterpieces that God created us to be. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 reads, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. We have been uniquely created and positioned by God to fulfill the plan and purpose of God. So anytime you find yourself going through, remind yourself, I've been uniquely and especially created by God to go through what I'm going through. He has strategically placed me where I am for his divine purpose and to fulfill his divine will. If he created me, for this, then I will get through this. Why? Because it is God who will bring you through. Saints of God, this is not the time to lose focus or to walk around with the wrong perspective. The wrong focus and perspective cause us to waste time and to fall behind and to procrastinate. I encourage you, saints of God, get up and get to moving in 2024. For God is not waiting on you. God is not waiting on you. God has already given us the instructions, and now it's time for us to move and to carry them out. Saints of God, this is not the time to lose focus or to walk around with the wrong perspective, the wrong focus for 2024 will mess us up if we don't change our mindset, if we don't change our perspective, if we don't get focused. For 2024, we will continue. Everlasting Life Christian Church, we're going to continue raising funds towards our building campaign. I want to thank all those who made and paid pledges in 2023. Thank you for meeting that pledge. We received an initial 2023 pledge amount of $5,800, but we actually ended up raising $6,700 in pledges, which is $900 above and beyond our pledge, pledge amount and, and original goal. We still need to raise and put down $150,000 in cash to secure our building loan. We are currently at $60,000. This means we need to raise $90,000 and I want to thank those who participated and supported our Pampered Chef fundraiser back in January. Thank you so much for your support. 
We started and kicked off our 2024 pledge, March 1st. It's going to run through November 1st. If God should lead you and should lay on your heart to make a pledge, please let us know. Again, you can use that contact form to let us know what that pledge amount is. It doesn't matter. The amount, just remember that scripture encourages us to give with three things in mind. When we give, we should give cheerfully. When we give, we should give generously. And when we give, we should give regularly. Yes, we have a long way to go. But we also have a pathway to getting there. So we welcome any personal loans as well that individuals want to make to Everlasting Life Christian Church to help us raise the capital needed to build. We encourage you, if you're a tither, if you are if you give offerings to this ministry, you to continue to do that. If you're interested in ways and how you can support ELCC and our building fund, this process, please reach out to us. So let me tell you where we are in the building process. You know, I want to share this tentative timeline and I already have an update for you. It is hot off the press as of end of last week uh, regarding our, there was a well permit and there was also a septic permit that we needed to obtain from Wake County. We have both of those, praise be to God. So we can check that off of this list here. Um, so now we can move, uh, there's a few more things that we need to check off the list before we can move forward with final approval on our site plan. And we're hoping and believing that we will get those last few items completed before the end of this month. And then um, we're also in the process of working on submitting our loan application and also signing a uh, building, a contract with the uh, the contractor, uh, an agreement with the contractor so that we can go ahead and when we get the funds, be ready to move forward and um, and executing that contract. And so there are several steps that still remain that we must complete before we can begin to break, break ground. But let me say this, our goal is to break ground before this, my goal is break ground before this year is over. It's what we believe in God for. Now, that very well, according to this timeline, it may not be until 2025. But we're believing God that we're going to break ground on our building in 2024. And I want to be able, by the time we release our next newsletter, I want to be able to share with you the land, where we are, what it looks like. Because we want you to walk with us through this process. We want you to see what God is. We want you to be witnesses of what God is doing through Everlasting Life Christian Church. We plan to give back to our community in 2024, just like we did in 2023. And I already mentioned at the beginning of uh, at the beginning of this live of this stream that we we are going to be distributing meals here in the next uh, little over a week. And that's one where we're going to get back. There's other ways that are, you'll find on our calendar, a list of events, how we're going to give back. Uh, I encourage you want to you want to see a quick view of our events. When you click on the calendar of events, hit that agenda button there and you'll see a quick list of what we have coming up. Our yard sale, let me go ahead and just uh, put a plug in for our yard sale that has been moved back to the end of this month, um, Saturday, March 30th. So please add that to your calendar. Resurrection Sunday is this month as well, March 31st. And so we are going to continue, even as we raise capital funds to build, that we're not going to let that stop us from doing the will of the Lord, doing the work of the ministry. Um, we did have our annual church meeting back in February 25th. I gave the church um, many of these updates and a little more detail and color uh, around the financials and what what is on our agenda for 2024. 
And so, you know, again, we want to thank you for just helping us make this year, uh, 2023, let me say first, a success. And then I just want to thank you for your support in 2024. And I pray that you will remain obedient to the will of God for your life, that you will continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand, that you will continue to remain focused, that you don't give up, that you don't back down, and that you don't turn around. So let me at this time, I just want to pray with you and pray over you. God, we just thank you right now for showing us. I mean, demonstrating, God, your power, your glory in our lives and in this ministry. Thank you for what you're doing throughout the body of Christ. I pray for other leaders out there who are believing you, God, for what is impossible for man. God is possible with and for, for you. Thank you for using us, God, to show this world and to show others in the body that with you all things are possible. I'm grateful to God for increasing the faith of your children, of your people today. Increase our faith as we trust and believe you, God, for the impossible. Let your will be done, God. May all the saints of God be obedient to your voice and remain in your will, that we remain in you. Even as Jesus Christ says that the Father is in me as I am in the Father, Lord, may we remain in Jesus. Because if he's in the Father and we're in him, then we're in the Father as well. Thank you for what you have in store for us, Lord, this day and for the rest of this week. Strengthen us, God, even in our homes, on our jobs. Pray for marriages. Thank you for salvation in the name of Jesus right now, God. Thanks. Thank you, Lord, right now for saving, saving souls. People who God backs return to you are turning to you right now. They can do that by just easily, God, repenting of their sins, confessing knowing that they are sinners, but believing that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins. He rose on the third day, God, and ascended to send back the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, to live on the inside of us. That is what reconciles us. That is what brings us back to you, God. Without your Spirit, we are none of you. We are, we are not yours. We don't belong to you. Thank you for filling us, refreshing, God, a refreshing that has been poured out in into the body right now. God, we give you honor. We give you glory for your strength, for your grace and your mercy. We love you. Oh, we adore you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right. Thanks again for joining me today. I pray that you have a blessed and productive week until we come together again. Take care. God bless you.